it's time. Give me the moon. Time to move to the future. Peacefully or painfully. No factions, no dreams. Just two girls lost and entwined. In the warm summer of the moon's day. <clears throat> New waters, Lunatair. Get out for a while. What? Oh, really? You don't need me on standby? Yes, but you're making everyone anxious. The pacing and sighing is becoming melodramatic. Even worse, some of the girls are beginning to find it very attractive. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Understandable, but... Show them some mercy and give yourself a break, please. Uh, sorry about that. I just snapped at one of the deck mechanics. I am getting tired. I know, and it's given her a disgusting crush on you. So please leave before more of my crew become compromised. <laughs> oh no. LT, no. <laughs> I, I still don't get why that happens. <laughs> that you don't is less of a saving grace than you might think. It's good that you're not full of yourself. But you have no awareness of your own value. Ah. I'm aware. It's not a mystery to me why someone would like to earn the approval of someone who treats them as if they don't deserve it. It's an intoxicating feeling. So why do they think I wouldn't want that too? I am just as greedy and childish. It annoys me. I'm not an invincible monster. I need the same things. Oh, grow up. You're no different than any of my other girls. You're the only one who thinks you actually have to be this made-up person. What? You think you're going to teach Pluto to not take on the burdens of those she cares about when you can't even throw off your own entirely self-inflicted ones? Oh. Read thoroughly. You know my girls aren't stupid enough to not see what a fool you are alongside your strength. They wouldn't find you so charming otherwise. Didn't you learn anything from your terrible relationship with my tragically pathetic niece? Oh, no. I... I, um... Learned to not pretend I could give someone what she wanted? Wrong. You should have learned that just because someone likes you doesn't mean that they don't also know you're an idiot. No one needs you to be stronger. You need to let yourself be weaker. Let people in. Do that quickly, so I don't have to hear any more complaints from you or those girls. Aren't you tired of hearing them yourself? Okay. And we just go straight into this. Some free time, obviously, with Pluto. We did this last time. We're gonna make up and forgive. It's been afternoon, but only half of the, half of the sky knows it. The burning gold fades into reds, pinks, purples, and the night at the edge of the moon's terraforming abruptly ends. It's such an outlandish light, like standing in the middle of the day and night. An unsteady feeling to be on the precipice of a hole between a world and a not a, and not a world. The boundary between Earth and space is here. Terraforming engines dutifully pour blue, white, and green into the craters and barren rock, the elements of the air, water, and life will continue until the moon is the earth and the earth is the moon. Cosmologically, philosophically, literally, the long-awaited unification of Luna Terra. Ooh. I want to watch it forever, even though it's not going to keep going forever. There's a pleasure in watching something happen slowly, like keeping track of the moon in the night sky. You can see it happening inch by inch. You have to be patient. But it's such a satisfying feeling. Lunatera looks up from a resting stop, resting spot on Mari Chrisium's foot. Oh, you ever watch it like this, Pluto? I thought I had finally stuck up on you for once. <laughs> I'm still not as crafty as Saturn. Darn. You were pretty close before I noticed you. Could have been a surprise if you really wanted a surprise attack. I wanted to see how long you'd trust me with your back. How'd I do? Great, until you tried to be clever at the end of that. <laughs> Whoops. I'm definitely gonna get yelled at again. You get yelled at? Or you got yelled at? 
Like I was in the academy again. It wasn't great. I wish I could have seen it. I'm really glad you didn't. I've seen all your most embarrassing expressions, but I never get tired of seeing more. It's no use hiding them from me. Fine, fine, I give up. Wow, you should get, you should get humbled more often. It's making you really cute. <laughs> you don't want to fight this time? I was hoping we could do it honestly, for real, for once. It might be our last chance for that sort of fight. I was thinking that too. It's our last chance to take a walk like this. Today I want to do that instead. It's not like the end of walks are at stake. There's going to be more walks than the Terra. But not, not exactly like this. I like it in the middle of things. The stillness of change. In the halves and in-betweens. So like you to be rooting for them, though, Luna T. Okay, though. Because you asked. You never ask for anything, so you should get it when you do. Come with me. I want to show you something. What they find is a waterfall, or something that's trying to be a waterfall. The rushing water flows through the canyon, until the atmosphere becomes too thin and the sun becomes so bright it burns to vapor, turns to vapor and dissolves. A rush of water stopping abruptly, yet very slowly. The point where it stops is moving forward. Eventually the atmosphere will take hold the sun will be able to strip the air and water from the moon. It's one of the last valleys left where space is still here, where nothing in inverse still exists, instead of everything in us. I thought it'd make you happy. You love lilacs still? Oh wow. I go so fast here. I wonder how. I think the seasons are playing tricks with them. But look, they're trying to grow right into the line of the sun follow the trail until they burn in the sunset. They'll keep crawling until they reach the valley. We're so unbelievable. Humans can overcome even this. Do sights like this still make you feel kind of sad? A little. But humans still deserve it, so I can't stay upset. This won't be the moon anymore, but part of Earth. And I want to hold the human and the alien together. We'll lose something if we don't. I wish you could be in that middle place forever. We grasp for something new. We lose everything we touch. I just want lilacs. And a home. A space with room for us. Wherever that is. How much would you give up to have that? A lot. How much would you? All I would need to make that choice is for you to make me feel that way, Lunatine. How do I do that? Convince me everything's going to be okay. That we won't be losing anything, even though we will. Make me feel that way once again. Well, we're no stronger, smarter, more perfect than any human beings on Earth, first of all. Second, there's no place more beautiful on the moon than anywhere on Earth. Really, think. Nothing else in the universe looks like that different, that beautiful. That incredible. Third, touching ship to ship isn't any different than touching body to body. We can speak that same language with just our own flesh. Just a metaphor, anyway. You could be human anywhere. That we did it up in space just means we can do it back on Earth, too. We know the language. First, we never would have been allowed to grow up like we did here back on Earth. Second, space is cool. Third, giant robots are impossibly cool, and nothing you could possibly say will change that fact. We're all we have. The world made me awful. I had to fight so hard just to be provisionally recognized as human. So I don't know why I miss it so bad. I wish you could tell me. My standards probably are bad. This part will sound stupid, but I don't want to believe we couldn't also be happy on Earth. No matter how good the future is, that our happiness isn't, isn't that fragile? You know, you say you have very little faith. But I think you have more than me. You don't want to give up. You have so much faith you want to keep going, even if you believe it's totally pointless. You're obscenely stubborn. Things could be much different. You and me especially. We're very, very lucky. If 
skipped in boarding space. It would have been even luckier. But you only get so much. I worry about what would be like if that hadn't happened. For me or for you. If what hadn't happened... Would it have taken us even longer? I already feel like it became a person too old. Would he spend our, our lives without ever... Luna. We'd have found another way. Somehow. On Earth or space, no one is ever born whole. We got there eventually, didn't we? <laughs> I think so, too. So I'd like to believe that no matter what, we could live and be happy? If we're never born whole, then we would have found a way to get to where we are now anyways. Why can't we keep going down on Earth, even in mortal bodies, on our boring, awful home? I mean, they can't undo what we've done. When they take us back, they'll have to make us a part of them. Isn't that the simplest? sneakiest way to get everything we always wanted? You really make me believe sometimes, Luna Terra. Giant robots are still really cool, though. Th yeah, well, I tried. Maybe it worked. It might be too late, but maybe it convinced me. You know I trust you, even when I can't. Come on, let's go smell the flowers. I want to touch them. I want to see if they're as pretty as I remember from Earth. It's not quite 9.8 meters per second squared yet, here on the moon, but it's getting there. The lilacs smell wonderful, and they're soft. The air in the water is like a dream, a real thing. You're really warm. And you're really cold. Well, still you're right. Skin to skin isn't ship to ship, but it's nice, too. It feels exactly the same, in a different way. No more or less. I missed you so much. I'm here. I'm right here. You really are. You're really still so bold, Luna T. I mean, uh... <laughs> I'm teasing. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> oh. That doesn't mean I'm not... I'm also not offering... <laughs> You're so mean to me. <laughs> but you love it. You can be so strong when you're trying so when you're not trying to be strong. Ah! That was sweet! Uh oh, Halloween. I knew you'd choose us in the end. Even if you didn't choose me. All that matters is that you're coming home. Hi, Hallie. Hello? I'm here. I was just startled. Why are you replying? <laughs> Since you keep messaging me, I thought you'd be less surprised. Sorry about that. Don't start. I'll literally never ever forgive you. Sure. That's fine. I'm not apologizing to you. You have so much to apologize for, but it's only to me. But are you saying sorry about something else you're trying to do? Maybe. Is a compromise I want you to consider. I should have expected one more betrayal, even at the end. No, it's more like... I want to make sure that you hold up your end of the bargain. No negotiation. The terms of surrender must be unequivocal. It's the only way they will allow us to return. Really, it's not a change of the deal at all. Just asking about how we interpret them. You shouldn't. I'm going to stop you if you pull anything. Really, I will. Very, very easily. Don't worry about that part. Well, in that case, I'm not going to be sorry at all. You should know that shame is what you've earned. And bear it. No. I didn't think so. I think you took away what I needed to be happy. I think I have to learn a new way. It doesn't seem fair that I have to when you don't. I have been learning. It's been hard. That's even less fair. You shouldn't be able to. You shouldn't get to move past this. Bitter X. Sorry. Or, not sorry. I'm taking this anyway. They're giving you everything you say you want. 
So what do you really want? Even knowing I got away fine. Wouldn't you feel guilty if you got something special and never shared it? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Memorial Foundation does not have the power or the courage or the hope. They have experience in numbers, and that still matters. It matters the most because the gravity well is whimpering, sputtering, and Earth's tactics, strategic and realistic, are favored. Their weapons are kinetic. They don't fight with anything dreamlike or unique. All they have to do is this... All they have to... All they have to do is to do this simple job. The fight between giant robots can only be so realistic. That's the best they know how to do. They've never fought on Earth, after all. Gravity Well is successfully commandeered by the Memorial Foundation. The limits are made clear. They were rockets built always for entry back home, and to take everyone with them. Halamid, in the low soul scene, soars in gallop, soars in glory, holding the dying Gravity Well in her arms. Through it, she extends the logic of Earth to every tidal reactor, the exact gravitational constant that determines human to be human. Oh, hey, Halley. Lunaterra, you've done so well. You've been so good. Are you still going to betray us? Europa told me to expect it. I won't. Like I promised. Even if the rest of the pilots may not forgive me, they're coming home now, too. Hmm. Is that a problem? I thought it was happiness for all. No one left behind. Emphasis on the no one left behind. Because the first is too hard. We have to be careful. You know that. They think we're more trouble than we're worth. It's a really simple, easy solution to us becoming another existential threat. Not a pleasant solution. A simple way to defeat it and prevent it. When they indulge the Memorial Foundation's plea for an alternative to their method, one used from the beginning of humanity to the present day, they allowed us. Because we made the promise of submitting without complaint. That's true. Europa never failed to remind me that Earth could just decide to kill us. But the Earth cannot be divided. We're meant to be one. Earth is an anchor in space-time for us. It wasn't always like that. We started from zero. We had to carve out our place in the universe, bit by bit. We have to move ever forward, marching in progress. As culture marches forward, so does our, gra so does our gravity increase. We need each other, and we need this culture, this gravity, to make it to make us together. I agree. Stop yelling. Humans need to come together. Lunatar immediately fires a solid bullet, a light bullet, into the gravity well restraint mechanism. The gravity well implodes back to life. Holy shit! In the middle of the victorious fleet, communication immediately falls apart as space-time and electromagnetic forces tear through them. Holy shit! You finally did it, Lunati. Hey, Pluto. <laughs> Something so dumb, I don't have time to get mad before I save you from it. You could have at least told me this is what you were planning. I wouldn't have. I would have. But I wasn't planning this until ten minutes ago. Hey, I didn't even cut it that close. Tell me you've thought of something good. I'll follow you. Even to a bad ending. But not if you've got nothing other than this depressing conclusion. I'd have to hate you to let me to let you do that, baby. Hands reach from behind her and hold the whale gently, easily, as Halamine's fingers shatter. What? What? Traitor! Sorry, I'm just borrowing it. You're not sorry now, and you weren't sorry then. I think you might really wish you were sorry. I want to believe you want to be sorry, but that's not good enough. It's certainly much too late for it. I wish, instead of wanting to be sorry, you just wouldn't be able to be happy again. I can't do that. Then please, deny this. Low soul is made almost entirely of constantly refracting hard light. It emits from every angle at light speed a drowning torrent of 
reversed vacuum, a void of energy, an unignorable, undeniable deluge, late with the substance and pressure and weight of water. The heaviness is unbearable. Luna Terra, especially, is so familiar. It's impossible to escape. Automatically, she falls right in. No matter what terrible things you've done, you've never forgotten exactly what you deserve for them. That's how you could make it up. That's how you should make it up. At least not in the same way. Which I know now. I thought I would die before. The nice thing is, if you don't die from this, you grow up. Even if it feels unfair. Are you suffering? Luna Terra reaches her hands as close as she can to the gravity well. Her own tidal reactor howls and creaks with the strain of not falling in. It isn't interested in Luna Terra's dreams. It just wants to have everything. The infant wish of humanity. Earth's pure greed. The white void. The all-consuming gravity that erases all distinction. Pluto can barely keep the light at bay. It tears into Pluto with perfect synchronicity. The Royal Foundation have been waiting for this chance at the unit they designed to defeat them. The one that remains reminds them of everything they can't have. The dream in space. She's drowning, but her fingers are still reaching, still holding the time and gravity well. The true enemy are the fast approaching autonomous defense units. Unlike a ship self, they're designed with war in mind. As Halamine said, the easiest option is just to kill us. The option they're always most eager to take. No wonder they felt the ship self program was just a fanciful indulgence. They are surprised then when Saturn tears them to pieces. Oh! She got her experience tearing the shit out of these autonomous units. Ha! Huh, I guess you were right. How unsure you were. You made it sound like it was going to be a lot harder. Pluto, you've been a good influence on her. How I've been a bad one. We're really suited for a hopeless woman like that, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Saturn. It'll be just a little longer. Don't ignore my nonsense. This is over, I'm not gonna forget it. Sure, sure. You can tease me all you want if you win. You're not very inspiring. It'll be super inspiring if we win. So let's do that first. Saturn poisons the waters, she corrupts the information. It washes over Pluto is muddy, pink, toxic, and definitely bad for you. At least doesn't want to eat you alive in the name of love. Just wants to mess you up in a good way and let you mess it up too. It's Saturn, in a nutshell. Doesn't want to kill you. Doesn't want to devour you. Overpower you. It just wants to cause a little chaos, have a little fun, mess you up, get messed up too. Destabilization has gone successfully so far. The gravity well is diminished and weak, dying fast. That's okay though. It's enough for a little wish. The greatest trick is just to move one inch forward. The only trick. Change the physics by a decimal point. A secret place where they won't notice. Equivalent to inventing a new Earth. It's changing the acceleration due to gravity by 0 0.01 meters per second squared. It's something that is impossible, even with the gravity well. The Earth is the Earth, and it will bind everything to it. Except that there is a nearby body in perfect sync, separable and distinct, and through and through its orbit, its tides influence in subtle ways the life of Earth. Influence the gravity on the moon? I understand that. This is something I want, too. You coming up with it? You coming up with this idea is just the worst! Why couldn't you just be a bad person with bad ideas and wicked dreams? I just wanted to hate you. And it's impossible now. Who would want to give up the moon for the Earth? If we lose, we'll really look like idiots. We'll live alone on a lifeless moon. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. The moon is to be abandoned, too. Unless you can bring it into... Such inseparable closeness. Uh, no! Stop convincing me! This sucks! I still hate you, but fine! Live on the moon. Away from me. Forever! Lo Solsi shuts the valve. 
Earth rips around inside her, but the gravity well, already compromised, begins to glow to life again. For a little bit longer, Earth can't touch it, can't shut it down. Left to its own devices, the gravity well will bring all things together. With all the fabulous dream tech of the Memorial Foundation International Space Program, the gravity well, which brings together matter, light, and culture, is the strongest execution of their dream. A pathetically mistake, mistaken one, too. The gravity well brings things closer until they pass through the event horizon, and then can never return to the universe again. The limit where even information can't return. Whether it's a good universe, or a terrible one, Lunaterra doesn't intend to find out. She's hopelessly attached to this universe. What we do want is to get a little closer. I thought you said you could find a way to be happy in any kind of future. I think that works if only if we try really hard to make it not suck first. See? She gets it. Well, it's not like I think it won't work. If the gravity well is sufficiently strong, it is true. We'll eat away at the tidal forces of the Earth. The math is like the gravitational forces of the Earth will change somewhere in the billionth place. How about the hundredths? That's definitely super impossible. I think we should move the center of gravity between the Earth and the Earth. We pull a little. Then we pull a lot. We pull until our bodies fall apart. I think then we can get a shift in the hundredths place. And bring a little bit of what we made here back home. That's a very generous kindness. And also an extremely petty act of revenge. <laughs> Fitting for both of these girls. Yes. I want to pay the price. And they should pay it too. The worst thing I can imagine is to live and die without being born. A future that is one against the unrestrained weight of the world. Don't worry. I'm not planning to do this just to lose. I'm stacking the deck. Coming back to Earth, just like you want it. Bringing everything back with me. I have modest ambitions. I choose the future I'm most frightened by. That crushes me under the pull of Earth's gravity. I don't want to wonder if I got away with it. I want to know that I could survive even this. It doesn't make a very good argument, does it? But you know, Earth is sweet. Even for someone like me, who's better at playing pretend. Than the real thing. No planet has a moon like this. No planets have sunset and life like this. Romance and beauty is down here, too. I went to beauty as human all along. We found something new in space. It was something that we achieved. Not these endlessly dead rocks separated by unfathomable distances. You can't just find it somewhere. You have to do the work. Yet, I want a reminder. A memento. I want Earth to remember. It's not an omnipotent, tyrant king. Many in one. Earth has a sister, and that sister is you, Luna. Luna Terra doesn't hear the alarm. Everybody knows exactly when it's supposed to wake up, and she does. She doesn't have to wake up this early anymore, but her body has a hard time letting her go back to sleep. She wakes up, and tries to focus her eyes. Her head hurts, just a little. So she thinks she'll go ahead and make coffee, except Saturn's arm is tugging at her shirt, and Pluto's legs are tangled up in hers. Maybe she can't make coffee just yet. She worms out of the comforter as much as she can. The apartment's summer air conditioning keeps things nice and cool. The summers here are hot, and so are the girls. That's fair. That's fair. Maybe if she tries really hard, she can go back to sleep, but it's hard. It's always hard with the sun still there, but especially with just the hum of the AC, everyone's slow breathing, and the light shiver of sweat. Oh. 
Hey, dude, wake up. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't pull me back into bed. Ludo, stop her. But I want to see who wins. <laughs> You're the one who wants to make breakfast. You made me wake her up. I like it's not your problem. <laughs> None of you were up when I was up, so it's time to sleep forever. That's what I said. Also, you're clearly awake, so let's go. No, Pluto. I'm making breakfast, though. I already turned on the stove. <laughs> it's fine. It'll just burn the house down. Help me stop Saturn. Okay. Yeah, yeah you betrayed her. You betrayed yourself. That's enough out of you. <laughs> Come get some coffee, Lunatine, before you get a headache over it. You're really such a fake. It, it's for serious. You too? You switch sides really easily. So do you. Up again? Alright, you're helping me make breakfast. Oh, what? How, goes, how come she gets to sleep in? She'll be right behind us. She was. Luna Terra shivered for a second. Bare under the AC. Then she got up. She turned the light cancel the light canceling off and the on the windows. And the day, which will last for the rest of the month, poured in. But she can feel a minute of. Oh, she wants to go get breakfast too. On the near side of the moon, the earth will always be visible. Without the hands of her old body, she won't ever be able to fly or feel the view as anything but a picture ever again. Even the memories are fading. The moon is closer, so close that there's almost no difference between it and Earth. It's another country, a strange country, and Earth is too. We're in the decimal place. Ooh, we got three achievements. Hmm. I'll have to check on those. See what exactly we unlocked. Oh, that was really sweet. Oh, this was definitely the most human of endings, as far as endings go. was really sweet. We accomplished there. In the end, we know that Earth is sort of inflexible, not easily moved. Earth is Earth, it's just our little rock in the sky, our Terra. And it's it's almost a case of as much as they had up there in space. Freedoms that they had living outside of Earth's gravity. There was still a part of her that just Well, no, it's a hard place to get my critical analysis brain on right now, but it's, the important thing is Lunatera got her revenge of sorts. One final betrayal. But for the good of everyone who was coming home. Everyone who was coming home to a world who, uh, would, was just as easily ready to just fucking kill them. And at, <laughs> with 
not being killed. Your reward for not being killed is to be forced back into Earth's gravity and all the, the constraints therein. Just surrounded by people on Earth who look at you strangely for being what you are, something that they deem as alien. What did, what did we do in all these cases? In Pluto's route, we stopped Cradle's Grace's plan to destabilize Earth's gravity completely and instead lived out our days on Venus. Living out our days in peace in our ship cells inviting anyone who came up to fight us to join us in that sort of combat of uh, where fighting is less about a struggle for power and more about a conversation in Saturn's, Saturn's route we underwent that change of inversion crossed the line, crossed the event horizon of gravity well, became something new. But became that in a way that was beyond that went beyond just in a way that was more than just becoming something alien becoming some alien enemy. We just became something fantastic. Something incomprehensible down on to us down on Earth. Something that we can just look up at in wonder, almost. What happened in uh, in this case, Luna Terra's route was always the one with the closest ties to Earth. In the end, when we stayed loyal, the Royal Foundation took control of the gravity well. Halamede, the angry, small, X of Lunaterra's <laughs> seized the gravity well. But in that moment, we made a snap decision. We wanted Earth, but we know that Earth didn't want us. So, we took hold of the gravity well. We moved that decimal point. If we can never have what we had in space back on Earth, we can never have what we had on Earth out in space. We moved the decimal point slightly. We expanded the reach of Earth. We brought the Earth and the Moon just a little bit closer together. We finally united Luna Terra. That's really poetic. I want to take a look at... Oh, I want to see that. I want to take a look at this list. No, I don't want to do that, you idiot. Okay, here we go. Beaten the game as Lunaterra. There's the Mari Chrysium. Sea of Crises, where the Mari Chrysium is christened. We got our true endings. Easter egg. I 
wonder if this is for, uh... Reaching day nine with, uh, our, uh, alliance exactly equal. Which I swear to God is possible. Because betraying your home, uh, alliance, uh, gives you 25% to that faction, but staying loyal gives you 12 and a half. With eight days, we pretty much need to stay loyal four, t four times, then betray to the other two factions twice. Then we can actually finish the game with 50% each. And there's obviously this. <laughs> Play as a terror and get an ending other than Memorial Foundation. I've never betrayed anyone in my entire life. Yeah. Exactly. That'll be all for now. I think what's next? Leading up to a final part of sorts? I want to try getting to Day 9 with my allegiance entirely equal. It is possible. I think that's when we'll get that Easter egg. Also, just going to try and run through and see if I missed any of the event choices throughout this game. I don't know if I'll do everything from both pers from both perspectives, since most of the choices come after an introductory conversation with your support character. And I gotta admit, Europa as a character did, did kind of turn around on me. Or just kind of being the, the stern educator who was always kind of a bit too bound by the Earth's gravity that she was born and live, lived most of her life on. She really did hold a lot of feelings. A lot of powerful emotions towards Time, their time and space toward the kids she taught and raised. All her problem children. She was stern, a little bit harsh. I, I still don't know how to rationalize some of those earlier conversations. Maybe if I breathe them again in a different light. And maybe if I read them again, having finished LT's route, they might shine through in a better light. But... Europa's character did turn around for me. That's good. Lunatee's still my favorite character. It's hard to say, which is actually my favorite ending. They're all really special in their own way. It's beyond we know the devil. All of her endings essentially akin to the true ending of We Know the Devil at some point in time. Wherein... Wherein We Know the Devil, we had to keep our trio of girls balanced to uh, finally conquer slash accept the devil become the baddest bitches since Eve. Finally have our happy ending together. Living free of those constraints. Heaven will be mine. All, all of these routes end with our three uh,
our three heroines, uh, our three disaster lesbians, uh, our three beautiful, beautiful disasters, ending up together in some shape or form. It's just... To what degree? In what way? With Pluto, we're still living on, on Venus in our ship cells, having that self to self communication, fighting and loving one and the same. Pluto as what well, with the Saturn just becoming one with the universe essentially becoming a part of the universe, becoming something cosmic something more than humanity something wondrous one of those wondrous bursts of color you see on a telescope that looks absolutely gorgeous but would no doubt be terrifying to see up close and personal, but that doesn't really... But in your wildest dreams, it doesn't really stop you from wanting to reach a hand out and touch it, does it? It's just some... So there's magical wonder in something like that. And of course, Lunaterra, we get a bit... We get everything we wanted. We get a bit more Earth. We changed Earth as revenge for them trying to change us. We changed Earth. We finally brought about the change on the moon. We finally have us... We got everything we wanted. We got the, mo the wonder, the beautiful things about Earth. We inflicted some change. Heaven will be mine, but depending on which personality takes the lead here, it decides what sort of heaven that will be, per se. And it's beautiful. It's enough of me ranting. It's been about way too long. If you watched, I hope you enjoyed. I predict next time will be the final video where we catch up on any dia any dialogue choices that we missed and then we try and uh, balance ourselves out so until then until then <laughs>